FTD fam, what's happening? So we got another surprising story here. Uh, this video is a woman that was going to Saudi to convert Muslims to Christianity, but there's a surprising twist to it. Today, we are bringing a profound conversion story that's unlike any other we might have shared before. Heads up, it's a beautiful story. It is based okay, on beautiful. events. It'll surprise you and it'll warm your heart. We are talking about Sister Daisy, an American lady from a family of devout Catholics. She was interviewed by Brother Sabil Ahmed last year. Here is her story. Miss Daisy and her sisters grew up in a Catholic family, and their uncles were priests. Unfortunately, she and her sisters grew up in this conservative atmosphere where they learned that Islam was a very backwards religion. For some reason, they were taught that Muslims did not know anything about Jesus, and that they were not peaceful. That's pretty much how she grew up, Miss Daisy. She grew up despising Islam. She grew up despising Muslims. However, life went on. She and her family continued to believe the deceptive things about Islam, primarily because of their family and media channels. At one point in her life, Miss Daisy was offered a teaching job in Saudi Arabia to work in the preschool at the American Embassy. Despite her deceptive image of Muslims, she decided to take up the job offer with the side motive to teach the children and people there about Christianity. Yeah. She loaded her briefcase with Bibles and rosaries, upon which she was objected by many people that she will have to face dire consequences for it. However, it was obviously not true. She reached Saudi Arabia, and her job in Saudi Arabia began. Please note that this was the first time that Miss Daisy got to meet Muslims on a personal level. Eventually, as she became more comfortable with her job and settled in, she decided to talk to people about Jesus. She wanted to talk about her divine love for Jesus Christ. Why wouldn't she? She grew up believing that Muslims had no idea who Jesus was. Daisy thought that Muslims were not civilized. In a way, she wanted to correct them. However, she was astonished as soon as she talked to some Muslims about Jesus. Whenever she shared a miracle of Jesus, peace be upon him, she was clapped back with two more. She could not believe that Muslims knew more about Jesus than she and her family did. Miss Daisy had thought that she might be put in jail for bringing Bibles with her. She was told that if she tried to bring peace and love in the Islamic culture, she would be put in jail for it. Imagine, However, throw in jail. Miss Daisy's whole plan for the missionary work didn't really work out. Probably mm -hmm. because there wasn't much work to do. Muslims knew about Jesus. Muslims knew more about the miracles of Jesus, peace be upon him, than Daisy did. All the information was right there in the Qur'an, including a complete chapter named after the Virgin Mary, Mediam, Jesus' mother. Also, their culture was not barbaric. Muslims were peace-loving people. Islam was a peaceful and extremely well-sought religion. She was surprised. Moving forward, after the job, when she went back to her hometown in America, she shared everything with her family. Obviously, the family did not take it well. They had been living in the little hole they were in for so long that they could not believe it. Daisy told them that it was all there in the Quran, Jesus and his miracles. They did not believe her. She told them about the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. She told them about the other messengers of Allah, including Jesus and how every messenger brought the message of the oneness of God. But instead of looking into the facts, her family wanted to take her to a psychiatrist. They wanted to do so because they thought that she wants to be oppressed. She is sick. Why would she want to be oppressed if she was not sick? For them, following Islam as a woman was metaphorical to being oppressed. Why won't you spend your life as a free Christian? Daisy's family said. These things did take a toll on her, and she got slowed down for a while. However, Allah is the best of planners. Her family took her to a priest, her childhood priest, for guidance. She shared her story with the priest. The priest was a wise man, and he suggested to her, At the end, you only have to do what your heart tells you to do. If your heart tells you it is right, go for it. Upon this, she became free. 
she gained back her power of decision. She started to be rational, and she decided to believe in both, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and Jesus, because that's what felt right to her. She continued to study about Islam and stopped going to church. After a few years, when she had her children in a Bible camp, the teacher told Daisy, Today we will be telling the kids about Jesus. We will tell them about God today. Are you sure about your decision? It was at this moment that she, at once, took her children with her and decided to make up her mind. Christianity didn't fit with her anymore. After a few days, she took her children and went to the Friday mosque. Eventually, after decent studying and research, she ended up going to the Orland Park Prayer Center and took her Shahada. She took her Shahada, the Islamic Declaration of Faith, with her children, and it was one of the most beautiful experiences for her. She learned how to pray and taught her children the same. It has been seven years since Sister Daisy accepted Islam. She is a full seven years. Wow. She went to Saudi Arabia with a mission to preach Christianity but ended up becoming a Muslim herself. Mm -hmm. Indeed, Allah misleads whom he wills and guides whom he wills. May Allah bless Sister Daisy, Muslims, and Islam. May we all continue to become even better Muslims and spread this beautiful message of Islam with all our brothers and sisters in humanity. Ameen. So, yeah, you see that there was a huge uh, twist to this story. Now, she went to Saudi Arabia. She had one thing in mind. And, you know, for her, it wasn't like an, a malicious thing. It's not like, oh, I'm going to prove to all of those people. I'm going to tell them how it is and prove them wrong. She was just saying, okay, this is my faith. This is what I believe. And I'm going to just go and share that with people because based on what I've learned about Muslims and what Islam teaches, uh, they don't know nothing about Jesus. So she gets there and she was like, oh, oh, what, what do you mean you believe in Jesus? What do you mean you believe in the virgin birth? What do you mean there's a, a, a Surah Miriam in the Quran all about the mother of Jesus? What? It was like, boom, mind blown. She did not expect that at all. And, you know, sometimes life is like that. You you think you're going down a path to do something and you, you, you you're just completely shocked. Like, what? Whoa, this was completely unexpected. You know, for for positive or for the negative, it happens at times. But for her, you know, she just came to a realization that Christianity just didn't fit with her anymore. She became Muslim and now seven years going, uh, maybe even longer now, based on when this video or when her story was uh, revealed. I don't know. But either way, I'm so glad that she was able to find something new and fresh uh, for her. You know, sometimes people uh, believe that based on what they grew up with and what they were taught, that's all that there is to life. And there's so many misconceptions that people can have about Muslims and what Muslims believe. But the best way to figure out what Muslims believe and what Muslims are about, you got to go to the Muslims. <laughs> you can't necessarily just assume. And vice versa as well, too. You know, I have a lot of people that have um, made a whole lot of uh, assumptions uh, about even uh, Christianity, for that matter. I've had people surprisingly tell me that, hey, you know, they checked out Scientology and they absolutely they love it. And for them, you know, like to each their own. Everybody's convicted and convinced in their own mind. I ain't here to stop nobody from doing nothing. If they feel in their heart that's where they got to go, then that's where they got to go. Let God guide people. Uh, I ain't trying to interfere with that. God's guidance for people and wherever that takes them is kind of how it, it takes them. I can only help to encourage you to really take action of, of your life and choose what you see and feel is best for you and your life and what's going to make you a better person, you know, because I've said this time and time again, if something's making you a better person, go ahead, do it. So yeah, really happy for Miss Daisy and uh, everybody that uh, has been impacted by her life. Really love hearing stories like this. Such a surprising uh, twist like that, you know, you can't, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to make this stuff up. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. Either way, guys, I uh, really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Also, share this video 
and uh, check out our recommended videos. I'll link to them below in the video description section. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and ring the bell to join the FTD fam. We post videos daily here, so always something new going on in FTD Speaks. So I look forward to seeing all you guys in the next one. Later.